Everybody gonna win There's no stopping us There's no stopping us We had a great set of stuff like this We don't care about the Raiders football Friday night, let's go! Let's go, let's go. Welcome to the show, everybody. We have been hard at work and we have an awesome show ahead for you. All week long, we talked about this amazing game of the week. Number one, Southeast Polk. Number two, Dallin. Could it possibly live up to the hype? Not only did it do that, it was better. Shannon Earhart joining us live now from Southeast Polk. What a ball game, Shannon. Scott, I'm still sweating and it was raining all day and cold. That's how crazy this game was. Honestly, every play that I saw on this field today could be on Sports Center's top 10. That's how good Southeast Polk and Dowling were. I'm not going to waste your time. Let's get right into it. We're going to start in the first half. Both had phenomenal intros here. Dowling come out looking like dogs per usual. And then you got Southeast Polk walking hand in hand with each other and they come racing out onto the field. It's their home field, their home stadium. Doesn't look much better than that. Dowling has the ball here though. Dante Cataldo to Trey Wilson to Curtis Horace. What is happening here? Lost the ball there for a second, but that's Horace who ends up with it in the end zone. A trick play by Dowling right off the bat. They go up seven, nothing. Connor Moberly didn't like how that looked. He takes a deep shot to the end zone. Carson Robbins gets sandwiched and it's Dowling. They are the ones who eat. That's Nick Freericks. Eat it up good. Second quarter here, Moberly sits back in the pocket, finds Sam Zelenovich on the slant and he's gone. One of his favorite players to target there, SCP on the board. They lead 10-7 at half. Let's go to the second. Dowling controlled the clock for most of the time. Takes a 14 to 10 lead with Rashad Davis TD. Rams ball though, that's CJ Phillips, former, former Maroon. Stop, drop, and roll into the end zone. Must feel pretty good against your former team, eh? 17-14 SEP. There's three seconds left in the game from 35 yards out. Andrew Schumacher can send this to overtime if he splits the sticks. SCP tried to ice the kicker, but Schumacher, that's a cool throw, if you know what I'm talking about. Good, and we're going to overtime. This game went to three overtimes. Southeast Polk holds Dowling to a field goal, and now there's a chance. Fourth down on a one-yard line. If they punch it in, they win. If not, they lose. None other than Connor Moberly stretches over the pile on the QB sneak to call the game. Man! Doesn't get much better than this. Moberly, the hero. Final score, 37-34. The third down we called it, and then um, on the fourth down, I wanted another one. I mean, I, they, they stopped me at first, but I had to reach and get it. And we stepped up in big time moments when we needed to, and uh, you know, we, we still have some things to fix, but great game by both teams. This behavior all too familiar by Southeast Polk. They beat Centennial by three, they beat Johnson by three, and now tonight they beat Dowling by three. It's nerve wracking for fans, but hey, I mean, Scott, a win is a win, right? Awesome, thank you, Shannon, certainly is, and they have won a lot, 8-0, what a game. All right, speaking of games, Joaquin Northwest at Centennial. Centennial was down 10-0 in the third. They cut it to 10-7 on the Elijah Porter touchdown run, but then Joaquin Northwest quarterback Sam Johnson is off and running to pad that lead, and Northwest does win 17-7. Been a tough year for Valley tonight uh, on the year, but tonight facing Ankeny, they were down 23-21. Final play, they put in Valley kicker Rico Alvarenga survey on from 31 yards out ball game. That's right. Valley upsets sixth ranked Ankeny 24 23. This was a huge game in Johnston. Urbandale 16 in the RPI. Johnston 17 in the RPI. Top 16 make it, so it's really a must win for both games. First quarter, Urbandale defense stepping up. Julian Booyer knocks it out. Tate, uh, excuse me, Tear Kwani pounces on it. Urbandale kids wearing the Halloween costumes on Friday the 13th. A bit later, still scoreless. Johnston deep in its own territory. That's a safety. Axel Ramazani drops, drops Will Nuss. Jayhawks go up two zip. Johnston finally gets the offense. Nuss to Minnesota commit Jacob Simpson. 
They had another touchdown before the half and the Dragons win a big one 21 to 2 at home. 3A big showdown crest in 42 28 over Nevada. Another top 10 matchup in 3A had Algona number nine at number 10 Webster City. Awesome donations all day and all night leading up to the game for the family of Officer Kevin Cram. Algona to the game now. They cough it up. It's going to be recovered by Jaden Weinsethel for Webster. Then Jackson Cherry. This guy is having a monster season yet again. The big time touchdown run through the rain. A rainy night up there. Uh, Webster City takes the lead. Then it's Keegan Heisler breaking free. 13 0 Webster City. They pile it on, winning big 47 0 at home in that showdown. When we come back, Jeff Dubroff. Where's Jeff? Oh, he, he's undercover. And we've also got our wild card. Johnson's band will take us to break. This is Nate Richards, The Real Thunder, and you're watching Football Friday Nights with KCCI. Way to go, Nate, but do we know if that was really Nate? Because we didn't see a Yeah, I know, right? Who knows? <laughs> Jesse Mystery. Roth here for the wild card. Jeff, uh, have a little bit of fun today. Yeah, I got to put on the uh, the mascot costume. Are we sure? Is that Nate? Lifelong dream. No, it's me! <laughs> Look at that face of just pure... It lost. I don't know. Mischief. Mischief. Yeah. Like, What's that? Where'd they go? <laughs> yeah, they called me out. They figured out I was an imposter. PCM, uh, they did much better than I did as a mascot. Their offense tonight hosting Iowa Falls Alden rolling. First quarter Mustangs already up 7 0. Gavin Van Gorp bubble pass to Griffin Olsen. Watch Olsen break one, two, three tackles into the end zone. Mustangs take a 14-0 lead. Their running back, Adrian Robbins, quietly dominating this season. Had 409 yards last week. Watch this. Patient. Breaks one. Cuts back. Breaks another. Stays up. And that's just filthy. Mustangs up 21 to nothing. Cadets are finally going to get on the board. 
It's going to be thanks to their do-it-all quarterback, Jaden Damiano. Five yards out, takes it left. 21-6 after that. That would be it, though, in terms of getting into the end zone for the cadets. 45-6, the final PCM takes it. All right, Roland Story having a fine season, and they were at home taking on Sadell, and Roland Story scored a lot. I love these rain shots. It's just, it's like NFL it's football. football. <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Heston Johnson, big gain on the outside, just dragging dudes. And then Fiston Carlson splashing in the rain for six. They go up 20 to zip. Rolling story, everyone getting in on the action. 49 nothing at home, Jeff. Norwalk hosting Lewis Central. Tough game for the Warriors. Elite student section, though. They were ready, but an elite offense. Look at that. Caleb Moore right up the gut, untouched, 7 0. Titans take the lead still in the first quarter. This Lewis Central team is dangerous. But a nice defensive stop by Dominic Tigner. Showing signs of life, but Lewis Central all too powerful. After that, Caleb Moore, another one, 20 0. Titans go on to win it. Final score 42 13. Yeah, you want to talk about upsets? Look at this game. Number eight, Gilbert. On the road, taking on Newton. And Newton uh, with the pink out there. Newton springing off a big play. Code Klein, the senior captain of the right side, busted loose. Down inside the 10. A couple plays later for Newton facing fourth and goal. And they don't get the touchdown there. They try the keeper. Huge stop for Gilbert right here. Big boy football. Yeah, and now some good offense for Gilbert. We're going to have a really nice pass hauled in by Ian Eldred. And, uh, you know, on paper, this looked like it would be Gilbert's game. But look at this final score. 21 to 2 Newton at home with a huge upset. Yeah, back to back losses for Gilbert. Let's wrap this up. Pella Christian at Colfax Mingo. Eagles going to hand their ball off to the big bruiser. Trevor Veenstra. Look at him go. That's a big guy to bring down all the way down at the 20. Eagles still driving. How about a nice play here? Escaping the pocket. Caleb Van Arendoc de decides to take it inside the 10. Eagles knocking on the door, and they're finally going to get let in the door. Veenstra on the sweep. He punches it in. High scoring game. Pella Christian takes it. Final score 58 34. Don't go anywhere. Fan of the week coming up next. Get caught up on local news, originals, and more. Download the very local app and stream for free today.
Welcome back. Rainy night, cold, wet. One of those games could have stayed home, had some hot chocolate, watched on TV. No, no not for this <laughs> fan. Our fan of the night, next level. Scott. Yeah, yeah, this is uh, our man Dylan <laughs> Gustafson from Rolling Story. Notice how everyone else has oh. the umbrella. Not our man Dylan. No. I don't know if I spelled Dylan right, by the way, but he was like, yo, we're in it. Yeah, baby, no umbrella needed. <laughs> Bringing the energy. He brings the energy for everyone. And look, by the way, rain is one thing, but it was chilly and windy. <laughs> I bet his hands are freezing. Yeah. That guy better get home, get a cup of tea, get a warm blanket. He Don't got, get a cold. He got his money's worth. Hey, yes, all the he scores, did. all the highlights on our app. Thanks for watching. Thanks for everyone who helped make this a great show. Good night, everyone.